स्टडी आई क्यू आई एस अब तैयारी हुई अफोर्डेबल वेलकम टू स्टडी आई क्यू माई नेम इज अमित वारी किलोर हाउ आर यू पीपल डूइंग टूडे और फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच आई नेसेसरी नीड एन आंसर फॉर एम आई विजिबल एंड ऑडिबल एंड समबडी हैज टू प्रोबेबली टेल मी बाई टाइपिंग इट इन टू द मैसेज बॉक्स शारदा दुबे आकांक्षा prudita well finally so that is uh, that means that i can actually read your messages and i hope i am audible and visible to you so i welcome all of you to the class uh, my name is amit varidhi kilor this is uh, as i am assuming is the first class of the study iq for all of you people right ankita muskan abhishek nandini uh, a very very good evening to each and every one of you okay just a sec let me see yes tejaswini and sanskriti great kanjan Great. Uh, if you have any problem, uh, as in the audio, visual, or technical problem, so please do let me know in the uh, message box. Any kind of uh, disturbances, if that might come, uh, if there are some technical issues, hopefully we'll be able to do that. So first of all, how are we doing today? Are you a little bit excited about it? Because this is the first class. This is the orientation class of yours. So which I assume shall give you some kind of an optimistic punch about the day, right? usually everybody is always excited in the first class the first class of the college the first class of the uh, school the first class of the your upsc preparation is also definitely slightly over excited i might actually look uh, over excited to you but uh, that is my standard operating protocol this is how i function on almost every single day but yeah the orientation of the first class or the first introduction class is definitely very very fun uh prudita now for uh, due to some technical limitations right now i cannot actually speak to you through the audio i cannot actually speak to you or visually interact with you right now so i'll be asking you a question and you'll obviously need to use your message board to answer it so just in case first of all a basic idea which i need to take for the batch is that how many of you are the first attempters abhishek good personality definitely it's udita okay it's udita but okay the handle has been named as prudita nevertheless hi udita uh, my first question is that uh, how many of you people are actually writing the first attempt so ayushi sanskriti uh, you just have to write me okay me yes sir yes sir ankita okay all of us are first attempters anshika olak olak tamuk that is a very very interesting name bhaskar akanksha devjit devjit is basically for uh, long term shreyansh shreyash shreyash is also long term so most of the people are basically appearing for the 2025 i assume i hope so that is what the batch is here for okay fine nevertheless so guys uh, let's get down to the business because you know, the more concise uh, we are the better we are going to perform uh, this is the orientation session of your first batch Uh, my main purpose uh, are two here the first of all i would like to tell you and explain you about the batch uh, what we are going to do in next one year how we are actually going to do and how i and study iq is basically going to aid you in clearing upsc or any exam which you might actually even prepare for our main aim would actually be related to the, the foundation all the syllabus of the upsc paper uh, gs uh, gs4 papers and the prelims we'll try to ensure all the syllabus is basically completed comprehensively through the live classes we'll provide us some mentorship so that during this long preparation stage because honestly speaking you have to prepare for this exam for more than one and a half years even before giving the first attempt right it might actually even have a longer preparation but yeah 1.5 uh, years is just the normal time of the preparation for the first attempt and let's be very honest that is a very very long phase of the preparation you need a lot of help during that sometimes you'll need a hand holding also for that we'll be actually taking hold uh, taking use of our mentorship program then so my first idea would be to explain you how we are going to lead to your examination for the next one and a half years and the second one we'll try to understand this exam okay we'll have a basic idea what this exam is about just get some uh data based uh, insight about the exams what i mean by that and what exactly i am trying to say by that will just be wo hame do teen din do teen minute mein bhi basically clear ho jayega and the third most important part of it i am assuming uh, at the first point my first assumption is that ki i hope you people know um, relatively uh, you have complete knowledge about the exam 
I think so. I'm right about it, right? You know, because you have already taken the decision to prepare for the UPSC. So you definitely know the basic outline about the exam, right? Exam, uh, uh, the structure of the exam, slight preparation ideas. But besides that, any of the doubt, if you have your exam related to exam or exam preparation, I'm here to clear those doubts, right? I think, uh, are we on the same page about it? Well, the first of all, we'll just take 15 minutes to half an hour, just basic discussion, what we are going to do in this batch and how we are actually going to help you in clearing this exam. That is just the same discussion of the brochure, okay? There's nothing specific about it. It's just uh, putting things into the context. That's the first thing. The second thing, I'll try to give you some insights about the exam, okay? And then we'll actually discuss the basic structure of the exam. And once we are done with all these three things, any doubt, any questions that you come up with or you are right now lingering in your mind, we can definitely take it. However, hi, Amardeep. I am Amardeep. Okay. That is... Uh, hi. <laughs> okay. Right. This is it. Are we okay with this? Are we on the same plane and the same page about this? Everybody? We need to make it slightly interactive, right? Well, spontaneously speaking, when we'll actually get used to these classes, uh, we'll obviously be slightly bored about it. And at that time, we can probably stop messaging to each other. But today, I'm so sorry about my friends, but we would, I would really, really need you people are slightly more active, slightly more proactive and be a little bit chaotic. I need you to message me something. I need you to answer me something. I need you to ask questions so that at least the first session shall be slightly more interactive. Are we okay with that? Okay, great. So first of all, uh, before, and that is slightly out of the line, but uh, I believe that shall be done because you have already joined the course. So you definitely have an idea about the UPSC, uh, but we will discuss in detail. Let's just see what this batch is basically going to be about. And that is just a five to 10 minutes of the discussion. So hopefully we will not take your much of your time. Guys. I'm pretty sure about it. Uh, this is basically the batch which you have joined, the UPSC Civil Services batch. It is the GS Foundation Prelims to Interview New Year batch. Your classes are basically beginning on the 8th of January. Today is 8th of the January. This is the day when you have decided that you're going to prepare for the UPSC. And definitely it is going to be for one to one and a half years of the preparation. Now, this batch is specifically called for Prelims to Interview. Um, as Every single person who is present in this classroom is already aware that the prelims uh, is the first stage of the UPSC. The second stage is the mains and the third stage is the interview. Interview The exam, which is called as the UPSC civil service examination, con consists of three stages. Uh, as generally the name goes, uh, which are usually self-explanatory, the prelims to interview batch means to help you, will try to actually help you through all these three stages. Our batch, the batch which you have joined, is trying to ensure, is the uh, will actually try to prepare you for the exam in three phases. The first one being the foundation phase. The foundation phase will go from January to December. And uh, the name is foundation. If it is not, if it was not self-explanatory, the idea is basically to build your foundation of your UPSC syllabus. If you have not checked the UPSC syllabus, we'll discuss it. Uh, we have four general studies paper, GS1, GS2, GS3, and GS4. Uh, the syllabus of those subjects are basically given in the UPSC notification that is generally released in February. We have to complete all of those topics, all of the syllabus, and the syllabus of the prelims through these years. These foundation phase will generally include your live classes where just like this class, uh, we'll cover all the slave, all the subjects one by one. So we'll start with economy, then we'll complete the economy in like 20, 25 days, 30 days. Then we'll cover the subject slavers of the polity. Then we'll cover the slavers of history. And one by one, there are approximately 20 subjects in the general studies section of the UPSC. 20, I know it is a lot. But then this is what the UPSC uh, exam which we have chosen. Once that is done, from January to December of the 2023, we suddenly change the gear and we completely shift solely to the prelims. That is called as the prelims phase. During the prelims phase, there is going to be a program, if I might say, will be that will be provided to you, where in 75 days, in 75 days, all the syllabus which we have done in last one year will be revised. So once we reach 6th January 2025, that is literally 363 days from here onwards, like just one year from here onwards, we will actually enroll you automatically, obviously, in that success in prelims program, which would include from 6th Jan 2025, you'll be given 75 days to revise 
your prelims subject and we'll obviously this will be done uh, through the similar live classes but there's going to be a difference uh, in the uh, uh, approach of the classes. The foundation classes would be slightly more detailed, slightly more focused, where the idea would actually be uh, in ensuring that you clear all your concepts. And the second one, uh, the success in the prelims would be slightly more objective, factual based, the questions uh, which from those topics are more probable to be asked in the prelims. Then once, if you are able to uh, 15th of the May 2025, when we are able to give our prelims and fingers crossed if we are if we are if we have done our work in this one and a half years and if we do clear prelims you go to the third phase which is the main phase uh, now i'm hoping some of the people some of you basically joined this course probably knowing about this that we are actually running a mains residential program uh, i'm a big fan of the self explanatory word it is mains residential program which means any student who has enrolled in this batch, if he or she clear prelims, the person is awarded a scholarship. That scholarship is basically called as Mains Residential Program. In short, that person is basically called to the uh, daily campus of the study IQ with all expenses paid, obviously, all the lodging, all the food, and all the offline classes. That person is provided a place to stay here, and he, all the offline classes are conducted, and the Mains test series is provided by the study IQ for the whole duration of the prelims to Mains approximately three months and once that means residential program and the whole means uh, till the time means is completed that person stays with us then obviously later on they go to home and if in case finally the results come then there is an interview phase where the interview guidance program is conducted now i have a basic assumption that you probably did see this before joining this course but in case you didn't if you have some doubts related to it we'll actually clear that also beyond that there is a basic schedule that is provided to you in this classroom okay now this is tentative uh, depending on your needs and requirements depending on the availability of the teachers and the faculties there might be slight changes to it okay however according to the tentativeness for the first few days after this orientation session we'll just make a basic uh, discussion about the general study slavers okay before uh, start learning we actually have to understand what upsc is asking what exactly are their requirements the previous year's questions and once we are done with that we'll start with the discussion of the economy that is the first module or the first subject that we are going to pick to learn and then it's a simple thing economy polity geography environment modern history world history and depending on each and every subjects each and every subject of the polity till the 28th of the December, we shall be able to complete all the four paper of the general studies. That is the basic idea, right? Uh, Ganesh is basically asking, sir, if I, I do not live in India, so in case I clear prelims, how can I clear for mains? How can I prepare for the mains? How can I prepare for the mains? For the people who are not living in India right now, this mains residential program is available online also. So, mains residential program, ki jo classes offline, hoti hai, the same classes are also available to the people who are basically doing it from uh, the preparation, doing from their home. Again, there's a huge possibility, right? Uh, some people are actually preparing at their home and they cannot come to Delhi, even though we are providing all the accommodations and all. Uh, it's an all expenses paid, but some people still prefer to actually prepare from the home only. Slightly comfortable, slightly convenient to certain people. So, in that case, this MRP program, the main test series, the evaluation of the test series, the mentor discussion, the things which uh, the people are provided here, they are provided through the online uh, uh, kind of online medium, right? So all the classes are basically available online. You write your main question answers. You will be sending it uh, through a PDF and the mentor discussion would actually take in the Zoom. So Ganesh, if you're not even living in, in India, the same thing is that this main residential program needs to be followed, right? Great, let's go keep on going on. So this, my friend, was primarily the basic thing. Now, I have a request to you. Please stay with me for one hour more, okay? In case you uh, have some urgent work, which I don't believe you're, you're starting your class today. So I don't think so you actually need to go somewhere. You probably have kept yourself free. However, this is something necessary. For the next one hour, I will try to provide you some data related to UPSC exam that you are preparing for. Now, my internal belief is that one way or the other, that is going to provide you insights about UPSC preparation. 
you need to understand your UPSC civil service examination very well. You need to understand what kind of competition you, you have. For that, let's start discussing it. Once I provide you this data, then we will discuss the actual structure of the examination and then we can actually take the doubts. Are we good? Uh, sir, is there no detailed mention of the civil service aptitude test in the PDF? Can we please discuss regarding that pass? Yes, Sanskriti, C set ke baare mein aapko bata deta. We will definitely discuss about the C set. However, Ross, just give me five to ten minutes to tell you something about this examination. Okay. Probably this is the information which you probably do not have right now. Now, you are preparing for the civil service examination, okay, uh, which is conducted by a uh, constitutional organization, constitutional body, which is called as the Union Public Service Commission. UPSC releases a annual report okay annual report what they did in one year which has a lot of data related to the exam they conduct about the number of people who are appearing about the number of the people who appear in the prelims and the mains SC ST male female attempts and some all other details right what exactly does go uh, what exactly is the kind of the profile of the people who are clearing the mains or final merit list. Also about the information that what optionals are people choosing. Now, see, there is a 90% of this examination is basically mandatory and the same for all. So general studies paper four, all the four paper of the GS, the essay paper, the prelims paper is basically same for each and everybody, but you do have to choose one optional of yours, right? So there are a few insights which I would like to discuss with you about the exam that might actually help you. Now, UPSC conducts a lot of examination in a year and the main and the most aspirational one and the most premium, you might actually say, is the civil services preliminary examination. I have the data of the 2021. Wo jo annual report hoti hai, wo thodi si delay mein chalti hai. 2022 or 2003, the annual report has still not been released. So we will be just taking an example of the 2021. We can extrapolate. Generally, the system would actually remain the same. The numbers would slightly differ. There won't be much uh, percentage difference. Kuch jada hoga nahi. Let's look at it. Okay. So we'll be focusing about this exam, the civil service examination and the civil services main examination. This is, these are the two main examinations that the UPSC conducts. In the 2021-2022, the civil service examination was conducted to recruit 833 bureaucrats. Okay. So let's see 833 bureaucrats. If you need this PPT, I can obviously share with you on my Telegram channel. These things are available. So if you want, you can actually go there uh, because some of you, I believe, might actually be preparing for the Indian forest services also. But for this discussion, we'll actually keep our discussion solely limited to the Indian civil services. All right, let's go with it. Now, civil services main examination. Uh, just a sec. Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, civil services main examination. Just get this information, some data, which will probably shuffle in your mind, also give you insight about the preparation of the exam. The civil services main examination of the 2020. Now, total number of the post were 836 and the number of the people who applied for the examination was 10,40,000. 10,40,000 people basically applied. This is the competition that you're dealing with. Next year, when in 2025, in February, the notification of the exam would be released when you will fill up the form. Three or four years ago, more than 10.5 lakhs people actually applied for the exam. You can just extrapolate it. The number only increased. So by the time you would be appearing for the exam, I can easily and safely assume 11 to 12 lakhs of the students will be filling up that form to appear for UPSC or for the Union Public Services Preliminary Examination. We get the hang of the things, right? We get the hang of the things. Ki 10 se 12 lakh bachche jo hain, wo form bharenge. UPSC Civil Service Examination. Ka. All right. Not a problem. The number of the recommended candidates that year was 833, which means for every one seat, there was 1,244 candidates. And this shall give you a basic idea, basic competition about this exam. For one seat, the number is basically 1,244. Now, remember, this is the civil services mains examination of 2020. I know we don't have the data for the 21 and 22, but we can slightly ex extrapolate it, right? Some, well, it's just up and down plus few marks. So next year, let's say the number of the posts were 900, the number of the applicants were 11 lakh, the number of the recommended candidate were 900, the APR, uh, approximate uh, aspirants per seats, 
right? Export ex, uh, uh, would actually increase here and there. But on an average, you're competing against 100, or oh, sorry, 1,250 students. That is the basic. And hence, the success ratio of 0.99. That is actually quite low, right? We'll talk about the qualifying paper profile also, but for a moment, just try to understand the exam, try to understand the nature of the exam. Now, we don't need to look at the other examination. Baki lab, baki sabko chhod dete hai, sabka data hai humare paas, lekin hum civil services ke baare mein baat karte hai. So, civil services main examination mein, we needed to hire 836 people, final recommended, recommended people were 833, out of 10,40,000 people, which means for every one single seat, more than 1250 approximately 1250 and that is what general competition would be and as i can see it has generally been increasing so when you're preparing for the upsc what you're actually doing is that that you are basically fighting against 1250 people coming to the interview uh, though th there's a slight mismatch into the slides uh, i hope you understand there are three stages of the exam one is prelims another is the mains and another is the interview and in interview you can actually choose the language of the interview you can give you can choose to even if you can write mains in english you can write prelims and mains in english but you can still choose the language of the interview now i shall just give you an idea how it is working out so in 2020, the data, the year which we are discussing, there were approximately 2,049 people, they were interviewed that year. And out of 2,049, almost everybody, 90% of the people, 1,853 opted for English, the medium of the interview. When you're called for the personality test, you can actually choose the language which you want to interview, to be interviewed in. Uh, we can see that almost each and everyone is basically choosing English. So that is why that is the reason is that they are writing prelims in English, they are writing mains in English, so they are choosing English as the medium. However, you do have a choice that you can choose a different language. Also, there were some people, at least Hindi, who chose Hindi as the medium of the interview, and it doesn't matter. You can write mains in English, and then you can uh, choose uh, the interview medium as Hindi. You can write mains in English. You can choose Malayalam as the medium of the interview. Uh, now, for all other languages, it is quite few. Marathi, there was 13 and the rest were almost negligible, 2, 1, 4, 1, okay, not much. So, I believe uh, this is, this just information uh, is basically far, in 2026, if you are able to clear the exam in the first attempt, you'll still be interviewed in 2026. So, I am assuming even on this day, like literally two years before you are actually called for your interview, that I think most of you would probably uh, choose English as your English, uh, English as your interview medium. Okay. Now, this is the number of the services. These are the number of the services which UPSC is taking this exam for. Somewhere around February. This year, it's 1 Feb. Next year, would probably approximately 1 Feb. The UPSC releases a notification of the civil service examination. Notification. Okay. And the notification means that you can start filling up the form for the prelims of that year. And in that notification, they tell how many seats are there for the civil service examination. You can take an average of 1000. There are plus minus 100. Usually there are 1000 seats. There are 1000 seats. Out of these 1000 seats, approximately 180 is for IES. They are on an average recruiting approximately 180 IES. On, on an average, approximately there are 150 of uh, Indian Police Services, IPS. Again, it differs. There are 20 to 30 Indian Foreign Services. It can be 10 to 25, 20 to 30. There is not exact number every year. It changes. There are 25. You can choose 20 to 30 Indian Foreign Services and approximately 150 of Indian Revenue Services. Indian Revenue Services. The rest of the jobs are these. Indian audit and account, these group A services. Okay. So, the top rankers, depending on their category, will get IES, IPS, Indian Foreign Services and Indian Revenue Services. And the rest of it, there's going to be audit and account, civil, corporate, defense, defense, information, postal, railway protection. This Indian Revenue Services is I have taken. Indian Trade, Armed Forces Headquarters, uh, Danix, Danips, Pondix. These are group B. So, there are at least four group B services also. You get that? Are we okay? Are we on the same page about this right now? Because I don't see the activity in the comment box. Not even slight one. 
except urvashi was she has asked for the telegram link nobody is basically excited about today i am hope you i, I hope you are excited about today okay i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not going to discuss it i'll give up okay okay vinit ayushi thank you very much for this moral support that you just provided me <laughs> sanskriti okay tejaswini thanks great now remember number of candidates who applied appeared and qualified for the civil service preliminary examination in 2020 now let's get some excited data which might actually help you in understanding this exam 2020 applied how many people applied for the 2020 preliminary examination the number is 10 lakh 40 40000 out of that 7 lakh were men 7 lakh were male सात लाख लड़कों ने अप्लाई किया था प्रीलिम्स को 2020 के 3.3 पॉइंट थ्री अप्रोक्सीमेटली तीन लाख सैंतीस हजार थ्री लैक्स थर्टी सेवन थाउजेंड फीमेल देवर सिक्सटीन ट्रांस एंड टेन लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड पीपल अप्लाइड फॉर द प्रीलिमिनरी एग्जामिनेशन मीन्स दे फिल्ड द फॉर्म फॉर द प्रीलिमिनरी एग्जामिनेशन हाव एवर वेन इट कम्स टू अपियरिंग मतलब गोइंग टू दी एग्जामिनेशन ऑन दैट डे एंड गिविंग एन अटेम्प्ट यूजली दिस नंबर ड्रॉप्स टू हाफ and we have seen the data from last 10 years this is what it always happens so if 10 lakh people fill the form when when it comes to the appearing day half of 50% of the people have already given so when it appearing may when it comes to appearing only 4 lakh 82000 people appear so just for the ease of the calculation we can understand 5 lakh people basically appear for the exam right uh, so 3.3 lakhs boy and 1.5 lakhs girl so on an average uh, just for the ease of the calculation uh, it's 4.8 but 5 lakh so you can understand 10.5 lakhs people fill the form but when it comes to appearing only 50% of them appear you'll see this phenomena this year also the number of the forms that will be filled in 2024 would be approximately 12 lakhs and when the people will appear on 26th of may 2024 the number of the people who will appear will approximately 5.5 to 6 lakhs that is what happens finally these people are somebody who are giving prelims that year okay this is these are the one who are giving the prelims this year and then finally they appear for the prelims and depending on the cut off 10500 people were chosen to given the mains now this number 10,564 people. Like how many people they chose to take for the mains? Because they could have taken 11,000 also. They could have taken 12,000 also. But they choose a particular limit, right? 10,564. What exactly entails that? Generally, the notification gives the number of the people they are recruiting for 836, right? And now this is not fixed. So 2020 की जो नोटिफिकेशन थी उसमें 836 रिक्रूटमेंट की नंबर ऑफ द सीट्स दैट अवेलेबल दैट डे वर 836 डिपेंडिंग एंड दिस इज नॉट अ फिक्स्ड वन 10 टू 12 परसेंट 10 टू 15 12 टू 15 परसेंट ऑफ दिस नंबर क्लियर द प्रीलिम्स फॉर द मेंस दिस रेशो रिमेंस द सेम 9200 पीपल वर बॉयज एंड 1300 वर बेसिकली द फीमेल्स so if i want to like make a crux of you this is how the exam is going to go for you also whichever year you are appearing whether 2024 or 2024 approximately and we are just taking talking approximate 11 lakh people will fill the form and out of that 5 lakh are basically going to appear for the prelims and because prelims mein 5 lakh appear hote hain the real one of the real competition does lie there out of 15 lakhs only 11 to 15000 depending on the number of the seats those year are available 11 to 15k this is prelims appearance and this is mains 11 to 15k and out of 11 to 15k approximately 2000 to 3000 2k to 3k are available for the interview they are called for the interview to the upsc you have to go physically to the upsc center near the india gate in delhi and then out of this finally jitni bhi seats recruit karni thi 833 as they did that year those people are basically selected the process is phenomenally uh 
long process is the best euphemism I can think of right now. It is a long process. You can call it a marathon. You can call it anything which way. But yeah, the preparations, the beginning of the preparation and the end of the preparation, there is a massive, massive competition. There is obviously, that is the reason why this is one of the most aspirational exam of the uh, India expiration. Now, the point here is that these stages, this prelims stage and this mains stage, this is what the maximum time of your preparation is going to take. Okay. And there are more than 20 subjects that you need to prepare for. So if you have chosen to prepare for this exam, remember for the next 1.5 years, 18 months of your life, you should be constantly, consistently and in a healthy manner with the mental health keeping that track of that also you have to be completely devoted in clearing this exam because i don't know what better data can actually show you the competition of this exam i'll actually show it to you hold on for a sec we can probably get much more clarity about it all right then we go with the civil services also uh table ka further or hum aage data mein baat karte hain so uh there were 10343 this is interesting okay uh, even uh, to you Total people who cleared mains, uh, prelims basically, who were uh, who were allowed to, legitimately allowed to give the mains were 10,564. Out of these 200 people did not appear for mains that year. How is that possible? Like people are getting the chance to write mains and uske baujud bhi number ghat jata hai. So at that year, only 10,343 people appeared for the mains. And the 200 people quit that process. They just gave it away. Probably some unfortunate, maybe accident, maybe somebody sick. But yes, somebody did give away. Then, out of 10,000 people who gave the mains, 2,049. These people were called for the interview. And out of 2,049, finally, 833 people were basically selected. That is the main competition. Now, Abhishek has, I, I actually agree with Abhishek. Abhishek, Dikshit, who is Abhishek, Dikshit. See, Abhishek is absolutely right about one thing. To be honest, your competition is definitely not with 11 lakh. Half of them are basically not appearing. So, it's a pointless number for us, right? It is a pointless number. Who cares how many people are writing form? How many people are filling form? Like, you can fill the form by like 2 million people, 3 million, doesn't matter. What matters is that how many people are appearing for the exam. But I can guarantee you, and probably Abhishek has an insight also about this, that out of 5 lakhs, maybe only 1 lakh people are serious. So you can easily think that you're not fighting against 5 lakh people, maybe 50,000, okay? But the real competition is this 11,000. Now, I'm not saying prelims is easy. And I'll be very honest, it is going to take a lot of effort, okay? It is going to take a lot of effort. However, actual competition is this. This is the cream of India. These are the 12,000 to 15,000 of the people who arguably are the best in academics, okay? Arguably, they are the best in delaying their gratification. They have the capacity to sit for 10 months and study only particular one exam. So this is where the competition lies about it. But then that is actually a very, very tough competition. Now, I like the Anshi Gupta. Anshi has a very, very good attitude. Anshi will like, sir. Anshi, I like the attitude. Anshi says, Ki, sir, mujhe chahiye hi I just want one, of, one out of it. So it doesn't matter competition. Like the optimism. Okay. Well, let's get the insights about the exam. Fine. Okay. Hold, hold on for a sec. Okay. Now, uh, this is, I don't know how would you interpret this. So these are the number of seats which annually UPSC has uh, recruited. So in 2011, uh, they, the number of the vacancies were 1,000. 2012, 1,091, 1,100. Uh, 2013, 1,200. 2014, almost 1,400. And then it started reducing. Uh, 1,200, approximately 12,000, 812, 900, 836. And it has slightly been increasing. Now look, okay, this is an interesting thing. In 2011, uh, you were uh, recruiting 1,000 people, okay? And in 2020, in 2020, you are again recruiting same 1,000 people. The number of the seats have not drastically improved. Not even drastically. It has actually been stagnant. It's the same. Now, in 2011, approximately 3 lakhs people. Like, in 5 lakh bachcho ne form bharata, aur 3 lakh ke kareeb appear kiya tha. Aur yaha pe, 2024 mein, 
क्या नाम है टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर में अप्रोक्सीमेटली ट्वेल्व लैख विल फिल द फॉर्म एंड सिक्स लैख विल अपियर फॉर द प्रिलियम्स द कॉम्पिटिशन हैव लिटरली डबल्ड विदाउट एनी डाउट बट द नंबर ऑफ द सीट्स आर स्टेगनेट इज द सेम बिकॉज if the population and if the number of the aspirants are increasing so don't you think the number of the seats should have also increased in the same proportion but this has been generally same so i can actually say this to you and i have a slightly sympathetic heart to you that if we come if we compare if we like uh, relatively if we talk about the last decade Uh, somebody who has who has been selected in 2020 2011 and somebody who will be selected in 2025 it is going to be doubly hard for you because that person was fighting against only 2.5 lakhs people you would be fighting against more than 5 and the 6 people the competition have actually doubled because the number of the seats have been stagnant so definitely not an easy chart uh, this is an information uh, which might not be actually helpful for you so you can probably skip it but this is just to tell you ki how many people are selected of which degree theek hai so bachelors out of you whoever have the bachelors generally uh, Uh, total if we talk about uh, see out of 2049 uh, these were the people 1600 people uh, final selection dekhte final recommendation mein 833 bachche select hue the usme se 650 bachelor degree wale hain so agar main aapko data isko interpolate extrapolate karu so out of the 1000 people who are selected out of the 1000 people who are selected generally 700 people are from the Undergraduate, 700 people के पास एक जैसे या तो बी टेक की डिग्री है या बी कॉम की है या फिर बी ए की है या फिर मतलब अंडर ग्रेजुएट डिग्री है एंड देन दो द रेस्ट ऑफ दिस इज अंडर ग्रेजुएट एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द थ्री हंड्रेड आर पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट जिन्होंने पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन भी करी हुई है राइट right? Uh, Ganesh is actually right. It means the more attempts you take to clear, the more competition you are getting every time. Uh, Ganesh, थोड़ा सा गलत इंसाइट है। I talk about that later on. No, actually, मैं नहीं है। The more attempts you take, uh, the competition still remains the same. Uh, so five lakh people are appearing. The, every year fifty thousand new people come, but fifty thousand the older people goes away. Fifty thousand new come, the older one fifty thousand goes away. क्योंकि there are limited number of the attempts for everybody. Uh, I'll talk about that. Okay, nevertheless. So this is what this. Uh, I don't want to discuss this. I don't think so. This is helpful for us any uh, for the today's discussion. So we're going to skip it. Now this is something which some of you might be interested. Now this is the chart that we have, and which discusses about the optional paper and how many students choose that particular optional. Now remember, this is. For 2020, okay, this changes. General trend is this, okay. It's not an exact exact data. Every year this changes. Obviously, it will change, right? But however, उसके बावजूद ही. So we just saw that the mains was given to 10,500 people, okay. So that is the 10,500 people appeared for the mains. Uh, the political science was taken by 1,900 students that year as an optional. Geography was chosen by thirteen hundred. Mm, anthropology was chosen by twelve hundred out of these ten thousand people because they are the one who are appearing for the mains. So, and this is the optional. So, depending on the optional which you probably like or slight have have an inclination or proclivity towards, do have a look which optional is being chosen more. Now, I'll point out the high high optionals, more number of the students who are taking it. So, uh, there are thousand. Uh, and the optional which is taken by more than 1000 students there is anthropology there is geography there is political science and international relations uh, there is public administration so these are the four optionals which are generally taken by a uh, sociology not public administration my bad not, not sociology uh, public uh, sociology sociology by 1245 people so these are four optionals uh, which in 2020 was taken by more than 1000 people now this is this changes uh, there there has been a trend which we have seen that whatever is the subject of the topper usually that subject starts gaining traction amongst the aspirants so in 2021 and in 2020 history was one of the subjects that was actually uh, was the optional uh, so was the topper subject the rank 1 also so probably in 2023 and in 2024 history would also figure amongst the high optionals i mean the an optional which is basically taken by more than 1000 students Sakshi will talk about it. Sakshi, uh, first, one more have a just look at it and about the literature. Uh, so, people who are not aware about it, uh, I, I hope so. But you shall actually be appear. 
the whole process of the UPSC is fixed and mandatory for all of us. So there is a GS paper one in the prelims and then there is a civil service aptitude prelims. Everybody has to give this. You can't change it, right? This is what the prelims is stage. And then whoever clear, cleared the prelims is allowed to write the mains, which is a essay type question paper. Now there are total nine exams, nine questions, nine on uh, nine question paper that you actually have to write. Nine is a lot. I know nine is a lot. However, how is that? There is a language paper, there is an English paper, there is an essay, there is a GS1, GS2, GS3, and GS4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These are 7 paper. Now, this is same for everybody, but you have to choose 2 paper of optionals. You have to choose your own optional. This has to be chosen by you. Everything else will remain the same for each and everybody. And obviously, this is the batch where we are going to do what is the same for you. So, we are going to do this section and we are going to do these sections. The optional, you actually have to still do from yourselves. And this is what some insights you can get from the optional. I can give you the data for 2021 also and for 2019 also. But generally, this is similar. This is what it is. Okay, nothing much about it. I'll also discuss uh, so, uh, how shall we choose the optional, when shall we prepare for it. But let's uh, complete this our data set so that we can be. Now, uh, these are the number of the people who are being selected. Uh, year 2018 ke selection hai, 2019, 2020 and generally you can see people who are choosing the humanities are more number of the people who are getting selected. See uh, what this shows is this. So these are the people in 2020, 40% of the people selected had these subjects, Anthro, Geography, History, Philosophy, Psycho and Socio. The rest of these 33% had the Commerce, Accountancy, Economics, Power, Paul Science. Again, not very relevant to us. Mm, community, age and gender wise. Now this is something I believe will help you I don't know how you're going to interpret this information, but let's give it to you. Okay. Let's give it to you. Okay. So there are 833 people. Those were selected. Let's, let's talk unki age kitani thi. Okay. How many people age kya kya hoti hai? What exactly is the age when UPSC, when people are able to clear UPSC? Okay. Now this one is this. So there are 106 plus 58. 106 and 58, 164 people of that year basically were 20 to 24 years of the age. I am assuming and my first judgment is that key, probably these are the people who are the first attempters. Okay. Don't look at the above data. That is just SC, ST, OBC, EWS and the general category. Just focus at this lower line. Okay. This lower line will give you the idea. So more than 106 and uh, 106 boys and 58 girls. They were from the age of the 21 to 24. They were the basically the youngest bureaucrats. Then from the age 24 to 24, 6, 154 to 78, 172 to 55. So 24 to 28, this is the highest selection age. What we see according to the data. Now that doesn't mean that if you are small, paper will not Again, there are obviously 164 people who got selected when they were 21 to 24 years. I hope you're getting the data, right? I hope you're finding it helpful. If you're not, you can please message me. You can tell me. I am at your mercy. I can do exactly the same thing which you'll ask me to. What is the meaning of recommended? The recommended means selected. Those people have been selected by the UPSC. They are IAS and IPSs. Recommended ka matlab hota beta. Fellas, this is your first day. This is the first day of the class. This is a proactive session. You need to interact with me. It might actually help you. This class, this orientation might actually set the stage for your preparation. You might end up learning something so important that will be detrimental for your whole preparation. So, I need your preparation. Dear. I need your attention over here. I have a personal uh, bias towards this chart. I don't want you to see it. Uh, I don't know how you will react to it, but let's see. So, we talk about those 5 lakh people, right? These, uh, mein, 2020, mein, how many people appeared for the prelims? 4.82 lakhs. Okay. 
4.82 lakhs people appeared for the prelims in 2020. How many of them were first attempter? 50%. That means whenever anybody, generally, when the prelims happen, 50% of the people are the first attempters. This is a trend which we have seen in the last decade also. This doesn't change as much. Okay, This is the same thing. Okay, 50%, they, again, this is 49, but I'm for the ease of calculation, I'm taking it as 50%. So out of 4.82 people, uh, 4.82 like students, 2,36,000 and some were the first attempters. And the number keep on decreasing again and again. This shall give you something very important. This is an important insight. See, the second attempter, this is the second attempter. Only 22% people are the second attempters. Again, this reduces more. Only 12% are third attempter. This is good. This is interesting. I'll tell you why. And the number keeps on decreasing. Only 7% are fourth attempter. And this is a very, this chart has, we, we, like I've seen it because I've seen all the uh, annual reports of the UPSC. This is standard chart. This happens almost every year. 2019, this had the almost similar kind of uh, figure. These are percentage number. The number changes, but the percentage remains the same. 7%, the fourth attempter. And it decreases so on and on, on and on. Okay. And this is like eighth and above. How many people do appear who are giving an attempt eighth and above? 1.4%. Now, that is a large number. If you put it in number, more than 7,000 people appear every year in this examination in prelims who is writing their 8th, 9th or 10th or 11th or 12th attempt. Now remember this thing. It means there's a lot of people like almost large section of the population are not able to prepare beyond first or two attempts. If you need to clear this exam, these are the two attempts you have to give it whole for because whatever might be the circumstances of the life, there is a possibility that the attrition rate is very high. Every year, half life. Every year, half life. Okay, what I'm going to show you the next might slightly be not very good. This is for the prelims. What's for the mains? What happens in the mains? There's a change that happens in the main. There's a large number of the first attempters. 50% of the prelims appearances by the first attempters. But that thing changes in the mains. In the mains, only 8.3% are the first attempter. Yani, the 50% of those people, most of them fail. Now, that is where the most important things of this session comes. The first attempters technically doesn't have competition. They are simply either not motivated enough, either not uh, getting the right directions and the mentoring, or they're just using the first attempter as a test bed for their, their second or third. Because they are the first attempters, they might not get the exact seriousness. They don't get the serious. They give the first attempt. They waste one or two attempts. Then they might actually get serious. So when it comes to mains, this figure suddenly changes. In the mains, only 10% are the first attempters. So out of that, but वैसे logically तो same to same flow होना चाहिए ना fifty percent अगर first attempter थे तो mains में fifty percent first attempters होने चाहिए थे but yes that means the first attempters either they are not the serious candidates either they probably are giving it just as a test bed now all of you are first attempters well most of you are probably some of us are not this is where you can win you have to understand that any time when you see a first attempter they are going to miss something important. This increases later on, 17%, 20%, 20%. 20%. We'll just uh, spread it. Let's just take it easy. Second, ka, third, ka, or fourth. Ka. Now, it's my judgment that all these third and fourth attempters were capable enough to write mains in their first attempt. They just ended up wasting it. Either they were not serious, either they had no right direction or right mentorship. I think so, you'll agree. Do you agree uh, Do you or do you have any other insight beyond it? Am I right or am I wrong? Am I right or am I right? Anybody, please, guys, tell me. Hemangi, they were gya. Anshi be like, Anshi is giving, his, uh, give, giving her second attempt. 
anybody so mai keh raha hu what i am saying to is that according to me the people who are giving their third or fourth attempt who are writing means they were capable probably to write in the first attempt also okay but either they were not serious or they were just testing or they just you, there were so many people there, there, there are so many amongst us right who just give the uh, prelims paper just for the sake of it like if you are the last year of the college let's just fill the form let's just go probably said right nevertheless this is what the data is and final selection let's talk about the final selection here what happens in the final selection final selection and the mains have the same see once we come to the mains now the person i think abhishek it was uh, i don't remember the name but the guy actually pointed out actually, actually right the your real competition is just in the mains mains to interview the percentage remains the same then it didn't change the first attempter going for the uh, final selection a this is the final selection so how many people were select are selected in first attempt 10% the second person second attempt 20% okay we are just uh, rounding it off the third 20% the fourth 20% so once we reach the mains the balance is over so meri baat ko dhyan se sunna is baat ko prelims mein first attempt disadvantage pe hai obviously yahan pe sirf 50% hai yahan pe 22% hai no doubts about it kyun kyunki prelims se mains ki jo stage pe ja rahe hain wahan pe ekdam drastic difference ho gaya however if in first attempt you do clear uh, prelims and reach the mains then you are equal to everyone that means you are equal to the fourth attempter also because then this percentage doesn't changes it's the same it's literally the same final selection 10% of the first attempters 20% for the second 20% for the third 20% for the fourth and remember like we would like to believe that the people who got 8th 9th 10th 11th attempts they'll probably be clearing the exam because they are unlimited attempts but the number actually decreases quite a lot there are not many people who are clearing exam after 8th attempt none there are not many people who are clearing exam after seventh attempt almost negligible so if you have a right shot if you have actual chance of clearing this exam clear prelims in the first attempt if you are able to do it you've already reached the amongst the equal then it's just a matter of the preparation and the day let's go for it uh this is the same data is basically just uh, extrapolated on a graph now the one and the last section of this discussion and then after that we can actually take your doubts okay all of them these were some of the insights which were uh, available in the upsc annual reports these annual reports are basically available on the upsc website if you some day if you want to reach uh, if you want to read on your own sometimes so you just have to type upsc annual report on the uh, chrome i can show it to you so that you do get an idea so the data which i actually showed you the insights which i showed you were from the upsc annual report If you go on the Chrome one day, if you're feeling like have a look at it, UPSC annual reports, you just find it out, and these are available, seventy second, seventy first, and all. Okay, the last one is the seventy second, but that gives the data for the twenty one and twenty two. Okay, so two thousand twenty two or two thousand twenty three, we have not data yet. Okay, so two thousand twenty two or two thousand twenty three, we have not data yet. Okay, so two thousand twenty two or two thousand twenty three, we have not data yet. Okay, so two thousand twenty two or two thousand twenty three, we have not data yet. Okay, so two thousand twenty two or two thousand twenty three, we have not data yet. Okay, so two thousand twenty two or two thousand twenty three, we have not data yet. Okay, so two thousand twenty two or two thousand twenty three, we have not data yet. Okay, so two thousand twenty two Now this gives this gives us an interesting chance. We are we are starting our preparation on eighth of January two thousand twenty four, and right now this year the preparation the uh, cycle of this year's exam is going to begin after first Feb. What we are going to do, each and every one of us is going to witness this exam this year. This exam को हम पूरा का पूरा track करेंगे time to time. We'll see कि notification कब आई है. We will actually appear for the prelims at our home. जैसे ही prelims का paper आएगा ना. तो उसी दिन शाम को बैठ के प्रीलिम्स खुद पूरा का पूरा सॉल्व करके देखेंगे या फिर अगले दिन बैठ के बिना आंसर देखे बिना आंसर की देखे पहले पूरे के पूरे प्रीलिम्स को पेपर को और सी सेट के पेपर को सॉल्व करके देखेंगे एंड अब ये मैं सिर्फ भगवान से मांग रहा हूं आप लोगों से थोड़ी सी पर्सनल इच्छा भी है कि मैं ऐसा कह रहा हूं अगर कर दो तो बिलीव मी यूल बी मच मोर क्लोजर टू क्लियर दिस एग्जाम आई रियली वॉन्ट द सीरियस वन ऑफ यू ki when the mains happen in september of 2024 what you should do is that ki the day the mains happen you just get the uh, question paper and write that question paper for 3 hours at home just as a simple dress rehearsal it's kind of a mock test i guarantee you anybody having that dedication is going to probably clear this exam i, I can't guarantee ki kon exam clear karta hai yani ka i'll be honest about it like nobody can actually guarantee you but yeah 
the person who actually works, who have the integrity, who is actually focused, who is doing the things which are necessary to clear this exam, shall be able to do so. So this is my advice to you. Follow the cycle of the exam this year. Look at the notification, read the notification when it comes. Give the prelims. Parallelly, mirror the preparation. And when the mains happen, try ensuring that you also write the mains examination at your home with discipline. I know it's a difficult thing. No first attempter does it. But if you are the that first attempter who can do it, I, I have a personal guarantee of mine that you will be writing mains next year in the actual attempt. Coming to the main thing, UPSC 2024. Now, what I'm going to do is this. Uh, because the notification of the UPSC 2024 is out on the 1st Feb. So, so, we are going to just have a look uh, from the last year notification. There's no changes, okay? Um, the, generally, the notification is entirely same. So, let's discuss the same things which you already know. We are going to see what this notification says. We are just going to have a look at the structure of the examination. If you have certain doubts, you can come later on from here onwards. Give me just 10 more minutes and we'll probably be done about it. Okay. So the notification comes and in that notification, they list down all the services they are basically recruiting this year for. That's what we said. So this 2023 civil service examination ki 2023 ki notification. Hai. This is all the examination they basically, this is all the vacancies or the post they conducted the exam for. Right now, the civil service examination 2023 interviews are going on every single day from Monday to Friday. UPSC aspirants are going to Dholpur, UPSC house Dholpur and they are being interviewed. The results will finally come in May 2024. They are being interviewed for these jobs. In these jobs, there are two jobs, Indian administrative services and Indian police services. These two are called as, called as all India services. Okay, this is all India services. The rest of them, Indian foreign and all these group A services. These are called as the central services. Central and these are armed forces, uh, uh, Danics and Danips and Pondics and Pondips. Pondics, Pondicherry civil services, Pondicherry police, Delhi Andaman and Nicobar, Lakshdeep police services and Delhi Andaman and Nicobar civil services. The group B services, these are basically again central one because this is also union territories. Ke liye. Now, these are the centers. I don't think so. We need to know uh, when we fill the form, whichever is the nearest town, which we can find out, you'll have to fill the form. Uh, this is the center for the main examination. Mains are obviously conducted only for 10,000 to 15,000 people. So the number of the centers are slightly limited to 24. It can be increased. Doesn't matter. Not a big deal. So again, not an, not an important information for us. Civil service examination consists of two successive stages. Let's talk about the things which you probably know. And in case you didn't, you shall know after the discussion of this. UPSC ka jo exam hai beta, do, do stages mein hota hai. The first one is called as the civil services preliminary examination, also shortened as the prelims examination, right? I hope so, you know that, okay. Civil services preliminary examination. There are two papers in this examination. We'll talk about that GS1 and the GS2, more popularly known as CSAT, Civil Services Aptitude Test. And then there is a, uh, I hate myself. Okay, then there is a Civil Services Mains Examination for the selection of the candidate for the various services and the posts that were just discussed. Now we talk about eligibility. Uh, again, uh, this is given in the notification every year. I am assuming that for Indian services and Indian foreign services and Indian police, candidate must be a citizen of India. I am pretty sure about it. All of you are Indian citizens. So, yes, baki jo services hoti hai, usme, there are some criteria, where is a subject of a Nepal, subject of a Bhutan, Tibetan refugee, and then there has been some uh, hai, exceptions that have been made. All those people can also give the exam for I don't think so. We need to know. I hope everybody is a citizen of India. So remember, IAS, IPS, or Indian Foreign Services. In Tino ko sirf or sirf Bharatiya Nagarik de sakte hain, nobody else. But rest of all the Group A and Group B jobs, okay? Rest Group A, yani ki Pondicherry Civil Services, Delhi Andaman and Nicobar Civil and Police Services. In that, even the subject of Nepal or even the subject of Bhutan is eligible for. 
A Tibetan refugee who came to India before 1st Jan 1962 is also eligible for those services. Right? Did you know that? Anshi? Anybody who knew that? Did you know that the subject of a Nepal, subject of Bhutan can actually appear for UPSC civil service examination? How come you have never come across anybody like that? Come on guys. Anybody? No, no, nobody, no, no, you, you don't want to answer, right? No, sir. Udita says no. Sanskriti says no, I did. Well, that be excited about it. This is new information. See, what I'm saying is that you're going to prepare for UPSC for next 1.5 years. A lot of new data and information would come to your uh, way. Uh, a little bit curiosity and a little bit enthusiasm about an unexpected piece of information actually might go a long way in sustaining the interest of the exam. Right? I hope so. Nevertheless. So, hopefully, it's not relevant. Nevertheless. Age. When it comes to age, you should be 21 years of the age. The minimum age is the 21 years. That is counted on the 1st of August of that year. So, if you are appearing for 2025, your notification will come in February 2025. The exam would be conducted in May 2025. Okay? Approximately. But your age would be conducted before 1st of August 2025. So, if you want to appear for the exam, you should have attained age of 21 years before 1st of August 2025. Uh, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. What I mean to say is that Feb 2025 may form form notification. In May 2025, you will write your prelims. And your age limit is interestingly enough from the August, 1st August of 2025, which means there is a possibility that somebody who is not 21 years might be writing their prelims. If somebody's birthday, if anybody out of you, let's say somebody's birthday is 20th July, okay, 20th July. So that person, when he was writing the mains prelims, or oh sorry, May uh, 2025 prelims, he was he has not attained the age of the 21. In July, he became 21, but he that is that person is a valid candidate. Why? Because his birth uh, birth date has to be counted before 1st of August. Right, Abhishek? Chali. That is it. Uh, upper lay age limit again uh, the five years for the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribe. So uh, SC or ST person can actually write till 32. I, sh I shall explain that to you, right? A general candidate, minimum age is 21. 21 is for everyone. SC, ST, OBC, everybody, 21 age. Usse niche ka bachcha paper nahi de sakta. For the general candidate, 32 is the maximum. Uh, any person who has attained the 30 year, uh, 32 year of age cannot appear for the exam. For the SC and ST, there is a rebate of 5 years. So an SC and a scheduled caste and the scheduled tribe candidate can actually appear till the age of 37. This general candidate will get six attempts and SC and ST. Now we say that they have unlimited attempt. But uh, theoretically speaking, theoretically they have unlimited attempt. Hote hai, but practically speaking, they get 16 attempts. You can't actually do it more than that. 16 attempts. Hote hai, but yeah, it comes as the unlimited. So an SC and ST candidate can appear as many times till the time they have attained the age of 37. Similarly, OBC have an age uh, rebate of three years. So an OBC student can actually give the exam till he is or she is 35 years of the age. They have an age limit, which means, oh sorry, attempt limit. They can give maximum nine attempts, right? If anybody is not, uh, if, if anybody is confused about it, please do tell us, okay? Then, uh, maximum of three years in the case of defense services personnel, disabled in operations, maximum of five years, ex-servicemen. Again, let's not uh, get into the more confusing. Date of birth, 10th class ke certificate, mein, jo date of birth likhi hai, only that is accepted as your date of birth. No astrology, no other birth certificate. It's as simple as that. The matriculation or the secondary leaving certificate. That is the only, generally speaking, will be considered your date of birth. Now, India is a very complex country. Sometimes uh, your date of birth in 
uh, the matriculation exam is uh, like 2005, 13th November 2005 or 2004. And sometimes you have a birth certificate which says 2006. Okay. There are sometimes years up and down. Aadhaar card says something else and the 10th class certificate says something else. There's a lot of confusion that might actually go. So UPSC has a very simple policy. Your birth date according to UPSC is what is in your matriculation examination. It's as simple as that. Fine. We are done with that. Horoscopes, affidavits. Birth extracts from the Municipal Corporation Service Records, they are not accepted, will not be accepted. Great. 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 All right. Great. Minimum educational qualification, you should be a graduate. It's as simple as that. You should be a graduate. Number of attempts, SCST, theoretically unlimited. Practically speaking, there are 16 attempts. OBC, maximum 9 attempts. From the age of 21, to 35. So there are 14 years available. Out of those 14 years, you can give nine attempts. For the, uh, where it is, they didn't, they didn't give the general. Why didn't they give the general? They should give the general also because in the notification, they have just mentioned the SCST, OBC, and the person with the benchmark disability. Where is the general? You have to give the, tell the people that how many attempts are available to the general. They're not, oh, oh okay. they, they did, they did tell. Okay, okay. So every candidate, shall be permitted six attempts as civil service examination. Generally called as the general candidate. <laughs> I thought there is a joke somewhere inside that. I don't know. There is? All the females are exempted from the fee. Doesn't matter. If you're a girl, you don't have to pay the fee. Yay. Right. If you are a male candidate and general candidate, you have to pay a fee. I don't know, they have said 100 rupees. I don't know, it was 200 or 100. It doesn't matter. Fine, forget about it. Great. Let's talk about the examination now. Let's talk about the examination. Now, let's talk about the examination. Thank you very much for uh, your patience. Highly appreciate uh, for our. Uh, the concern which you have shown, all the information which I showed to you. Now, my, it is my theory, personal theory, that the things which we discuss might actually give you slight insight into the exam. And if it doesn't, you should also have a look at the annual report of the UPSC. Might actually help you getting an idea about the exam, about your competition, which is fine. Now, now we are going to talk and discuss about what this examination is all about. Something which I believe you already know about. Right? That is why you're preparing for it. So I'm pretty sure about it that you know the blueprint of the examination. Okay? I'll just repeat the same things which you already know. Okay? Examination consists of three stages. The first one is the UPSC preliminary examination. Now, I have a very, very humble request from you. The humble request is that I really want you to be interactive right now. Like really, really interactive. You need to ask questions, ask doubts from me right now because if you don't like what is stopping you first of all nobody is i can only read your name you can actually troll me if you want that might actually you can tell me a joke if you want why to be so boring this is the first day be excited about it so do we need to need to have a plan b now hemangi has definitely touched upon a very philosophical aspect of the exam do we need to have a plan b Hemangi, I'll keep that question. Uh, just give me 15 more minutes here. I'll just uh, parrot the same things which I'm assuming you people know. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to that same question. It's an important question. We shall answer it today. Examination of the UPSC conducts three stages. The first one is the prelims. The prelims of the examination generally is conducted during the May or the June or July. Again, the, these months keeps on changing. Generally, it has been happening since uh, last uh, two or three months, last two or three years in the May. So I'm hoping the examination for your attempt also would be somewhere around May. This is called as the preliminary examination. This preliminary examination is an objective type of paper, objective type of paper. On the day of the examination, you go to your assigned center and you are uh, supposed to appear for two exams. One from 9.30 to 11.30. Since last two decades, this has been the exact time, 9.30 to 11.30. Where they conduct an exam, which is called as the General Studies 1, GS1 exam. This GS1 exam have 100 General Studies question. 100 questions. 
each question is of two marks, which means the total maximum marks of this examination is 200. We'll just have a look at the syllabus uh, on what basis these 100 questions are asked. Then from 2.30 to 4.30. They have the GS2, more popularly known as the CSAT, the Civil Service Aptitude Test. Again, this is also an MCQ, multiple choice questions. Matlab, they ask you a question, they give you four options. You have to choose the correct one and then mark in an OMR sheet. This is what this. This will ask you 80 questions. Each question is basically 2.5 marks, which makes it again 200 marks. The maximum is 200 marks. But there is a very, very important distinction between these two exams. This examination of the civil services is basically called as a qualifying exam. Qualifying exam means you don't have to score marks in that. Your merit would not be decided by CSAT. However, you have to get a certain minimum number of the marks so that you are considered for the next stage. Once you clear that minimum marks, it doesn't matter how much marks you have. Which means to say, out of 200, you are obligated to score 67 marks. That is the 33%. It is a qualifying. So, every student, whoever appear for the UPSC, have an obligation. It's a mandatory thing that when they appear for the CSAT, they need to get more than 67 marks. If they don't, basically the attempt is exhausted. They are not selected for the next stage. Okay, but the actual competition, actual basis uh, for your selection is this paper number one, the GS1, where there is a cutoff that is decided every year that differs on the basis of these 200 marks. So you go, you are going to do as many questions as possible out of those 100 and later on when the uh, marks would be done, the top percentile, the top 12,000 people according to the uh, different uh, categories, okay, according to different categories are basically selected. I'll give you an idea what this cutoff is. For example, in uh, last year, if we don't have cutoff in 2023, the 2023 exam which happened on the 28th May of 2023, the cutoff of that exam has not been released by UPSC till now. But in 2022, 2022 the cutoff was approximately 88. 88 point something, which means for the general category, which means if you belonged to general category, you had to score more than 89, 88 point something, 88 point cutoff jo thi, 88 se zada number lane thi, aapko means ke liye appear karne ke liye. And then this is different for each and other category. Hai? So EWS ke liye 80 hai, OBC ke liye 86, SC ke liye 82, ST ke liye 78. Again, depending on the category, there is a like a slight decrease in the marks depending on that particular category. Similarly, in 2021, this number was 92. Similarly, I do not exactly remember in 2020. And again, remember, don't mistake this. Assume, karo, assume, mujhe yaad nahi hai, 95 laga lo. 95. Out of 100, 88 out of, 100, uh, out of 200, 92 out of 200. 95 out of 200, which means the cutoff of every year differs according to the competition and according to the difficulty level of the question paper. Okay. In 2016, this number was 116 also. So this cutoff basically differs from separately. Right. Are we getting it? Are we getting it? So the real competition, which this exam, jo aapko karna hai, that is here. I'm not saying that you don't have to do CSET. CSET, obviously, you have to do the CSET also. And the difficulty level in the recent year of the CSET has actually gone to the level of, some says that it has become as difficult as a CAT exam. And uh, I have slight agreement with that topic. I, I have slight agreement with that statement. Yes, uh, there's no denying the fact that the CSAT of the UPSC have increased in difficulty levels in recent years. Like almost every year, it seems that the difficulty level has increased. So in 2020, CSET was difficult. In 2021, oh my gosh, it's more difficult. In 2022, oh my, it is still getting difficult. In 2000, it is very difficult. So yes, so there has to be a specific, separate attention that needs to be put on CSET. 
uh, anecdotally speaking and personally with my own experience also, I have seen very brill se several brilliant students who score really high in the GS paper have not been able to qualify prelims because they were left out in the CSAT. Nevertheless, we'll talk about these exams. We'll talk about the syllabus also. Just a sec. Okay. It's a simple thing. There are four alternatives to every question. And for the each question, jab wrong answer diya jata hai, so there is a 0.33 negative marking. So coming to this exam, main thing, which is this exam, uh, the GS paper one. And for the GS paper two, there are 100 questions. If you do a correct question, okay, you read the question, you chose the answer, you marked it. And if that is the correct answer, you get two marks for one right answer. And in case you mark the wrong answer, you get minus 0.33. Minus 0.33. Uh, minus 0.33 ka 0.67 number cut jayenge. 0.33%. Right? And if you leave it unattempted, like you don't attempt the question, question chhod diya khali, bilkul attempt hi nahi kiya, well then you get zero, nothing. No harm, no loss. Okay? No harm, no loss. Uh, not attempted is equal to zero. Negative marking, which means uh, it is basically uh, trying to ensure that people don't mark the question which they don't actually know. So, jo guess karte hain, jo tukke maarte hain, unko basically rokne ka ye tarika hai negative marking. So that you only attempt an answer which you at least have some semblance of getting correct. Cutoff differs from the difficulty level of the paper. Sakshi, yes. Yes, absolutely. I'm coming to the mains after this. Okay? This is uh, done. If a candidate gives more than answer, it is obviously treated as a wrong answer. And uh, if a question is left blank, no answer is, uh, no marks is uh, given. So there will be no penalty and no marks. No harm, no loss. Right? That is it. Uh, once you are done with this exam, again, this differs every year. Logically, it has to, it's, it, you can't have a save cut, same cutoff every year. The same cutoff is every year for the C set. The C set, every year you have to score more than 67. But for that GS paper one, it will depend year to year, depending on your competition. All you have to do is you have to score maximum, as much as possible, as much as possible. Once this is done, as I have told you, right now we have discussed, there is approximately 5 lakhs people who will be appearing for this exam. Solely on the basis of this GS one, there are 14 to 12,000 to 15,000 people going for this means. Twelve thousand to fifteen thousand people going for the mains. Now the mains. Let's talk about the mains because that is actually where everything will matter. Mains uh, is font visible for you? If the font is not visible, I'll actually write it on the board. But I hope uh, because you already know basics about it, so I think you'll be able to make out. The mains written examination generally happens three to four months after prelims. So if the prelims was in May, the mains is generally conducted in September. Okay. May may prelims ho gaya. If the prelims was in the... Aray yaar. May may prelims ho gaya. Well, generally the mains examination, it's called, it's literally called as the main examination. The civil service main examination. They know that that was prelims and this one is the main. So September have the main examination. How is it conducted? This is how it is conducted. Let me just explain it to you. So there will be a particular September, uh, there will be a particular Friday in mains. Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. On a Friday, they will have one paper of the essay. Only one paper. You will go at 9 to 12 essay paper. That is it. And you will come back. Next day, on a Saturday, you will go, you will give two paper, 9 to 12, GS1. And then, 2 to 5, GS2. On the next day, 9 to 12, GS3. And 2 to 5, GS4. We will talk about these subjects. Then you will get a five day off. Okay. And on the next weekend, then you get an off. This is off. Monday to Friday, there is an off. Then you get the next weekend on the Saturday and the Sunday. Okay. Uh, they're on, uh, on one day, you will write your optional paper one and two. And on the Sunday uh, or um, the second day, you'll write your uh, language and the English paper. Let's talk about all of those papers. So 
there are in total there are nine paper i hope you can understand so this is 1 2 3 4 5 right 6 7 8 9 these are total nine paper ye wo 10th class ke jo paper hote hain na 12th class mein jo paper dete the waise paper hote hain 3 ghante ke liye you get a question paper you will, there will be one question and you will have to write subjective essay type answers in that. Okay. Each and every one. Aayye, dekhte hai, kya hota hai? So, first of all, in ke baare mein baat karte hai. Out of these two, out of these nine papers, there are two papers. These are qualifying like C set. Qualifying, which means you need to score a minimum marks in that. Those marks would not be taken into merit. Okay. But you need that basic number of the marks. So, how is that? So, this is paper one. You will have to choose one paper of your own language. You can choose any language. One of the Indian languages to be selected from the language included in the eighth schedule of the constitution. हमारा संविधान है, the Indian Constitution, उसके अंदर एक शेड्यूल है, eighth schedule. उस eighth schedule के अंदर total 22 languages लिखी हुई है. They are constitutionally recognized languages of the India. Out of those 22 languages, you can choose any language. Uh, if you do not know, I'll actually like to show it to you. Hold on for a sec. Eighth schedule of the Indian Constitution. So if you read the eighth schedule of the Constitution, uh, Okay, with, how do we find it? Okay, this is it. Huh? I think so. This will help. So, yeah. Yeah. So, these are the 22 languages which are mentioned in the constitution and they are generally called as, that is generally called as the schedule 8 of the constitution. You can choose any one language out of it to be given as a language paper. Isko kehte hai, mains ka language paper. Okay. So, you can choose Assamese, Mathili, Kashmiri, obviously there is Hindi, where is Hindi, where is Hindi, there is Hindi, you can choose Hindi, Kannad, Urdu, Nepali, Marathi, interesting, okay, you might seem ki schedule 8th of the constitution, but Nepali is also uh, in that, okay, you can choose Nepali, Telugu, Tamil, Sindhi, Santhali, Sanskrit, Punjabi, Odia, choose any one language, okay, now this is a qualifying exam, qualifying exam means, all you have to do is that, out of the 300 marks, you have to score 90, that is it. And then there is a paper of English. Okay. English. Out of out, out of English. Paper be English. 300 marks. Ye last wale din hote hai, okay. This is this is conducted on the last day. Bilkul, dono ke dono. So, bas qualifying exam hai. Nothing special about it. Actually, mein, uh, and you don't, uh, matlab, main waise bata deta hu, and I don't want you to be like, uh, taken it lightly. You don't need much preparation for these two exams. Okay. Uh, 10th class ke level ke, 10th class ke English or 10th class ka language, jo bhi Hindi, Odia, koi bhi aap lenge, that will be for the 10th uh, level. So, it shall not be much of a problem for any of you, I believe. I, I guarantee you that. Okay. Now, there have been people who have not been able to clear language papers sometimes. I personally know one of them. Okay. But yeah, nothing to be worried about. All you have to see is just, uh, just have a look at the previous year's question paper of last two or three years and you shall be done. Shall not be much of a headache. The actual competition, this is it. This is what we have to prepare for the next one and a half years. Whenever we are thinking, whenever, whatever we are doing. See guys, uh, I'm, I'm a very anti-motivational person, okay, personally speaking. I really don't think uh, the motivational speeches makes any sense. Whether it's on Instagram or whether it's on YouTube, all the people who are actually giving you motivation or who are actually trying to motivate you in any manner. I know they meant, they mean well, okay. They mean well, I know they are just trying to help you out in a manner. But it has been my personal experience that the motivational speeches or the motivational quotes have zero practical, tangible value. So I'm not the one to actually uh, throw gyan on you. However, I do have to reiterate and point this out to you, this, that if you have chosen, I don't know what was your uh, um, motivation for this thing that you have chosen to do the UPSC. And if, agar kar hi rahe ho, uh, if you have decided that you have to do, please do it with integrity. If you do plan to do, it doesn't matter what happens in the future and how it is going to work out and what is the end uh, game of it. But if you do do it, do it with the basic integrity. Means 
if you're doing it do focus give yourself to it matlab after you are done you should be able to see and look yourself in the mirror and you should say i did it this is this is how it was done this is the best i could have done and there is nothing that i could have done it that will actually bring something uh, the gold out of you okay sorry about that one i hate i i i hate it too i know i don't like to be motivational and stuff but sometimes it's it's a it's a occupation hazard you know uh, once you become a faculty once you become a teacher once you become a mentor once you become an educator the motivational speech is basically comes naturally to you you kind of get the platform to speak it just I, i hate it's it's just come it's an occupational hazard the motivational speeches but you get the point mera kehne ka sirf ye arth hai agar karna ka soch liya hai to isko dhang se karna sahi tarike se karna which means be devoted to it and uh, do it with integrity aise nahi hai ki din saal nikal diye hain bas dil nahi laga hua in cheezon mein karna hai to dil se karenge nahi to we have a lot of things to do matlab there are so many things uh, all right let's come to the essay okay ग्रेट ओके नाउ अब मैं छोटी सी बात है पंद्रह मिनट का और है उसके बाद विल टॉक एंड क्वेश्चंस एंड नथिंग मोर देन दैट दिस इज एन एसे दिस एसे अच्छा बाकी सारे के सारे पेपर ढाई सौ नंबर के Everything else is basically 250. These two papers are for 300 marks. They are qualifying. You have to score approximately 90 numbers and nothing much. That is it. It's fine. Easily done. Never worry about them. Okay. The question actually, the uh, the competition lies here. This is an essay. This is for 250 marks. When you will go to the examination room, you will get a question paper. There are going to be two sections: section A and section B. There are going to be four topics written in section A. There are going to be four topics written in section B. You have to choose one topic from section A. You have to choose one topic from section B. You have to write one essay from section A, and you have to write one essay from the section B. One twenty-five marks ke do essay likhne padte hain. Now that is not fixed. UPSC might change it any day. They might give you three essays. They might give you one essay. That they they keeps on surprising sometimes. But yeah, in last five years, it has always happened like that. So for now, you can actually believe. So this essay paper, which happens on the first day of the mains, okay, it has been tradition since last five days, five years. First day of the mains, you get two essays to write of one twenty-five marks each. One twenty-five marks each. Now your target, and on the first day, I'm giving you. Sorry about this, my love. Slightly burdening you, but on the first day, your target should be to score somewhere. more than 130 marks in this essay paper whenever you write a question paper whenever you write an essay of 125 marks your target shall be scoring 60 to 70 that is what the traditional topper generally the toppers or the person who becomes an ias and ips scores then there are going to be the four gs studies paper we'll discuss the syllabus the general studies paper 1 which i'll tell you a funny thing about about this paper UPSC is uh, uh, slightly sometimes not present when they are writing the notification look at the funny part okay so they call essay as the paper one okay then they call the general studies one as the paper two general studies two as the paper three and the general studies paper three as the paper four and the general studies paper four as the general study as, as the paper five my personal theory probably us din biscuit aur chai nahi aayi thi that's what i believe because how can you <laughs> mess this up <laughs> how did you do it and why did anybody do it but this is literally how it works mains ka paper 1 jo hai wo essay hai mains ka paper 3 jo hai wo gs paper 2 hai aur mains ka paper 5 jo hai wo gs paper 4 hai how do somebody mess it up i don't know my conspiracy Probably us din UPSC walo ko chai achhi tarah se aur biscuit achhi tarah se nahi mile the. <laughs> But it is funny to me. Okay, so these four papers they are called as the general studies paper where the syllabus is given and all that syllabus will totally combine to make approximately eighteen to nineteen subjects. Subjects. For example, this is GS paper one. Now we have to uh, prepare for two fifty marks of the GS paper one. Every paper, me twenty questions come. Twenty questions they are going to ask. 
कुछ दस नंबर के हैं कुछ पंद्रह नंबर के हैं सो टेन क्वेश्चन ऑफ फिफ्टीन मार्क्स एंड टेन क्वेश्चन ऑफ टेन मार्क्स एंड द सब्जेक्ट यू हैव टू आंसर द क्वेश्चन ऑफ आर्ट एंड कल्चर यू हैव टू आंसर द मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री सोसाइटी एंड जोग्राफी देन यू हैव ए पेपर टू इन द पेपर टू अगेन 20 questions of 250 marks. You have two questions related to polity, governance, uh, social uh, government schemes, and the international relations. Then the paper three, then the paper four. Similarly, and paper four, I hope you have heard about the ethics. का जो paper होता है ethics. Uh, 250 marks का paper है. 130 marks की theory or 120 marks की case study, which is a very very unique uh, section of this exam. The case studies. We'll talk about that. And then there are two paper of the Optional, an optional which you have to choose. So now, if we see about the whole examination, you have to make two choices. Uh, now, I don't believe this is much of a choice. The language generally, जो mother tongue होती है, you have to choose that. So, for example, I can speak and I can I'll, I'll obviously write the mains in English. However, when it comes to choosing the language paper, I don't have much choices. I'll end up choosing Hindi, maybe. So you you choose your mother tongue. So I personally don't believe that it has a choice too much. But yeah, optional, you do have a choice. You do have a choice. There are twenty five subjects plus one literature. There are total twenty six. हैं तो पच्चीस subject हैं और twenty sixth वाला है literature of as many uh, subjects as many languages there are in the eight schedule. उसपे से जैसे आसाम लिटरेचर ऑफ आसाम इज लैंग्वेज लिटरेचर ऑफ ओडिया लैंग्वेज लिटरेचर ऑफ मैथिली लिटरेचर ऑफ हिंदी इंग्लिश लिटरेचर यू कैन चूज एनी वन ऑफ इट ठीक है सो दीज आर दी सब्जेक्ट जो कि अभी मैंने दिखाया देन एंड वंस यू आर डन विद दिस आई होप सो विल टॉक इट इन द डिटेल दीज आर दी ऑप्शनल सब्जेक्ट यू नो वेन डू आई फील मैक्सिमम सिंपति फॉर एनी ऑफ यू वेन यू विल हैव टू मेक अ डिसीजन फॉर टेनिंग टू दिस Uh, this is going to be literally uh, the decision of the level of choosing a spouse and even if even though you people are young hopefully you do understand that choosing a spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or, or the partner is a very very important decision the right spouse can actually give a lot of happiness to you the right partner the right friend can actually give a lot of happiness to you that is the level of this decision and i don't want to burden or <laughs> like threaten you with the consequences but this has to be right this subject has to be learnt for next 2 years at least minimum so you have to choose it very carefully do not come under the influence of the toppers or the youtube videos or the youtube teachers which you see the people who recommends you any optional will always be recommending from his own vantage point right because he is that person who finds that subject easy right i suppose suppose oh, hold on for a sec for example you are talking to a topper and that person has cleared the exam from the political science and international relations so if you ask for a suggestion that what option shall you take what do you think that person will advise you for political science and international relations easy and simple why because he have cleared it so his experience has been positive about it so he can actually give you the pros uh, better he understands that subject better so if you ask for an advice he is going to ask you for psa but you are not that person you will never be that person it's about the aptitude okay and there are different subjects look there is a mathematics which is an entirely different subject than sociology there is animal husbandry and veterinary science which is very very far away from history so there is a lot of aptitude about the subject now i can help you in the strategy of choosing an optional but at the end of the day it has to be your decision because nobody knows it better than you what is the right optional for you i know i know it is anxious this is a very anxiety generating question okay and i i hope anxiety is good anxiety is right that means you are actually worried about taking the right decision but yes uh my only advice is don't be influenced by an external force here this has to come from inside of yours i hope i made that clear did i am i right or am i right somebody give me some moral support type yes sir thank you very much sir we love you sir appreciate this insight of yours 
थैंक यू सबके सब सो के जागते हैं जब तुम लोगों को मेरे साथ ऑफलाइन क्लास में होना चाहिए सो दैट आई कैन पिक द चौक और डस्टर एंड कैन ऑब्वियसली डायरेक्ट एट योर डायरेक्शन एंड इफ यू आर नॉट लुकिंग एट इट इट शुड हिट यू राइट एट योर हेड गणेश इज एस्किंग सर इज मैथमेटिक्स ऑप्शनल स्कोरिंग गणेश दिस वॉज द प्रिसाइस रीजन माई लव दिस वॉज द प्रिसाइस रीजन माई लव वाई आई एक्चुअली शोड यू दिस Ganesh, you're asking me is mathematics uh, the right option? My question is that in 2020 there were more than 580 people who appeared from mathematics and total 26 people cleared, <coughs> recommended. These are the people who were selected and 580 people wrote mains out of it. You should check other annual reports also of 2019, 2021 also. This will give you a better insight. मतलब it's a good option and to be honest, it's a large number of people are taking it. Like uh, फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट्स टेकन बाय फिलोसफी उससे नीचे है एंड इकोनॉमिक्स कॉमर्स सिविल केमिस्ट्री मतलब इट्स ए हाई ऑप्शनल अ लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल आर बेसिकली टेकिंग मैथमेटिक्स सो आई थिंक देर इज अ वाइब टू इट वाइट इंजीनियर्स आर गुड एट मैथमेटिक्स साक्षी यस दैट इज वाई दे टोक इंजीनियरिंग बिकॉज दे वर गुड एट मैथमेटिक्स मतलब इज दैट अ थिंग यू डिसग्री विद कि मतलब इस बात से गुस्सा हो आर यू एंग्री अबाउट द फैक्ट दैट इंजीनियर्स आर एबल टू स्टडी में इट्स ओके डू यू नो दैट चार्टेड अकाउंटेंट आर क्या नाम है गुड एट कॉमर्स डू यू नो डॉक्टर्स आर गुड एट बॉटनी एंड जुआलॉजी डू यू नो द लॉ ग्रेजुएट इज गुड एट लॉ मैथमेटिक्स इज देयर सब्जेक्ट ऑब्वियसली दे शुड बी It's a problem if engineers are not good at mathematics. That is the problem you should be discussing with me. So yeah, uh, literature. You can take literature of any of these subjects. A lot of people do choose literature also. Okay, Assam is Bengali, Bodo, Dogri. So this data I have shown you is because I showed you the data for the same reason that it might actually help you. And the question paper for the examination would be for the conventional. Uh, there is going to be three hours of the examination. And okay, uh, I don't know this is helpful for you, but I'll tell you this is an interesting fact. Uh, you probably won't use it. Candidate will have the choice to write the optional paper in English and write paper one to four in any of the language included in the eight schedule of the Constitution of India. मतलब कि there is an availability that you can choose to write your optional paper in English and GS paper in Gujarati. You can choose to write optional paper in English and GS papers are in Marathi. But this is an option. I don't know anybody of you will probably use it or not. I hope so. No. Why this is there? Uh, if somebody is asking the question, usually, just for example, uh, let's say that somebody did animal husbandry and veterinary science. So, animal husbandry or veterinary science, जो है, वो मराठी में नहीं होता, होगा, या गुजराती में नहीं होता, या ओडिया में नहीं होता है. So, वो करते English में ही है. But that person की बाकी जो education हो सकता है, वो अपनी mother tongue में हो, language में हो, मराठी वराठी में. So, this option is available. I am just highlighting you कि uh, अगर some of you need to i don't think so anybody of you need to but i just wanted you to ki aisa hota hai that there is a possibility somebody can give optional paper in english and can choose to write gs in a different language uh, none of you will i know that theek hai great so you can choose any all the question paper you can write all those seven papers in any language which you want english and in any other uh, Schedule language, but the language paper and the English paper that has to be like fixed. English paper to English may hoga, baki up sare ke sare sato paper kisi me likhte hai. Ganesh, uh, thank you very much for pointing it out uh, that the success rate is more for certain optional uh, than uh, for 4.8 percent for the math. Here, uh, I'm so sorry for picking up 2020. In the rest of the years, it's equal. Uh, this was just an incidental year. थोड़ी सी स्केलिंग ज्यादा हो गई थी शायद 2020 में इन uh, 2019 थाउजेंड कनिष्क कटारिया ही बिकेम अ टॉपर एंड ही स्कोर्ड वेरी हाई मार्क्स इन मैथमेटिक्स ओके 
ही वॉज एन आई आई टी मुंबई स्टूडेंट सो उसकी वजह से स्केलिंग बहुत ज्यादा हो गई थी जब किसी साल कोई ऐसा इंडिविजुअल है जो बहुत हाई स्कोर कर देता है तो बाकी सबके मार्क्स जो है वो स्केलिंग से कम हो जाते हैं दैट डज हैपन सो या बट इफ यू इफ यू लुक एट दी अदर रिपोर्ट सो द सक्सेस रेशियो ऑफ द मैथमेटिक्स इज इक्वल टू ऑल अदर सब्जेक्ट फंडामेंटली डिफरेंस नहीं होगा ओके Uh, then uh, interview. This is nothing. Okay, this is nothing. Uh, if you do clear mains uh, again, you would not be able to know the marks. But out of these twelve thousand people, generally three thousand people are basically called for the interview. You have to visit Delhi, the UPSC Dholpur House. Uh, you have to face an interview board of five people. One of them being UPSC member or chairman, and then there are other four members being the bureaucrats, the serving bureaucrats, or the retired members of the. Uh, क्या नाम है कम्युनिटी एंड स्टाफ एंड दोस पीपल इंटरव्यू फॉर अप्रोक्सीमेटली हाफ एन आवर टू फोर्टी फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स इट्स अ वेरी जनरल इंटरव्यू इट्स अ वेरी जॉनरिक इंटरव्यू डिपेंडिंग ऑन योर डिटेल्ड एप्लीकेशन फॉर्म दैट यू फिल आफ्टर मेन्स दैट यू फिल आफ्टर प्रिलिम्स इट जस्ट अ जनरल कॉन्वर्सेशन ओके दर इज नो सब्जेक्ट मैटर एक्सपर्टीज दैट यूर रिक्वायर्ड इन दैट इट्स लिटरली अ बेसिक अ कॉन्वर्सेशन विद यू पी एस सी मेंबर्स ओके थ्रू दैट दे ट्राई टू गेज how resilient how confident how smart how intelligent how good you would be and i don't know whether it is efficient or whether it is fine or good or not but out of that 40 45 minutes those five people are going to judge you and they are going to quantify that experience into marks so they're going to give you marks of out of 275 275 so if you look at it this gs1 is for 250 this is for 250 this is for 250 this is for 250 so this makes for 1000 marks this is for 250 essay is for 250 so that's 1250 two optional paper they are for 250 so this makes for 500 so the total marks basically 1750 the rest of the paper 8 and 9 the language and the english they are the qualifying so wo merit mein nahi lagte hain ye 1750 ke baad interview hai interview hota hai 275 marks ka so 2025 में से टोटल नंबर आते हैं द हाइएस्ट मार्क्स रैंक वन एंड देन अकॉर्डिंगली डिपेंडिंग ऑन द नंबर ऑफ द वैकेंसीज दे विल चूज द पीपल एंड दे एक्चुअली टेल यू कट ऑफ नाउ विल जस्ट गेट टू द क्वेश्चंस राइट नाउ इमीडिएटली सो दैट इज इट बस एक लास्ट और है जस्ट टॉक अबाउट द सिलेबस दिस इज बेसिकली द सिलेबस एंड दिस इज गिवन इन द नोटिफिकेशन एवरी ईयर हैज नॉट चेंज सिंस लास्ट थ्री और फोर फाइव ईयर्स Uh, this is the preliminary examination part A. The part A, the preliminary examination. Okay, the paper one of the two hundred marks and the duration is basically the two hours. Two hours, nine thirty to eleven thirty is the general time where you do have. And this is an indicative syllabus. Okay, indicative as in they just mention that they are going to ask questions related to the current events of the national and the international importance. they're going to ask questions related to the history of india and indian national movement it's a very very comprehensive uh, term so when they have written history of india they ask question related to history of india out of anywhere like uh, ancient india medieval india the modern india they can basically ask. it's just indicative indian and the world geography the physical the social the economic geography of india and the world similarly quality and governance economy and the social development general issues on environment ecology biodiversity climate change that do not require subject specialization which i believe is a joke because believe me jo subject specialization hai jinke paas kabhi kabhi wo bhi environment ke question kar nahi pate hain upsc wale so <laughs> slight irony in that statement of theirs and general science so there are total seven topics 1 2 3 4 5 Six and the seven. Now these are the seven broad subjects which they ask prelims question for, and some of them they have not mentioned it. But uh, on uh, the analysis of the last fifteen years of the question paper, uh, I think everybody of us, when we judge it, so we do realize that they also ask questions on art and culture. They ask question on art and culture specifically. They have been doing it since last fifteen years. They ask questions on art and culture. They have been doing it since last fifteen years. They ask questions on international relations also. which according to them art and culture is basically part of the history of india and international relations is basically part of the current affairs but yeah if you do separate it as a subject it's slightly easier to manage 
okay it's slightly easier to manage this is it done okay then there is a civil service aptitude test Whoa, okay okay forward and then this is paper number two colloquially known as the csat now you can read the syllabus but primarily speaking is as two sections there are approximately uh, 40 per 50 percent 40 questions of english okay you can call it comprehension communication skills and all that and then there are 40 questions of quant mathematics and reasoning okay you can consider it all quant maths reasoning okay again it's a very very uh, like uh, it's something not accurate. It's a, it's a very inaccurate decision. So, kabhi kabhi aisa bhi hoga, 30 English ke hain, 10-15 reasoning ke hain, 40-35 quant ke hain. But these are the two broad structures which these questions ask for. So, uh, to clear CSAT, you have to be good with at least one ability. Either your language abilities should be very good, either your mathematics ability should be very good. If you lack both of them, you're not good with mathematics, and you are not good with language, then this subject needs to be prepared separately. Then you would have to give and devote time to it. Like other subjects, ke liye jitna time lagega, fir uske liye separately alag se ye karna padega. But if you are good with one of it, either language or either mathematics, well, then it is fine. Then, then, then basically shall not be much of a problem. It's not like it's going to be easy. And please don't misunderstand me ever. Then it's like it's fine. Then we shall not be much worried about it. Then we will just traditionally uski preparation karenge and we can sail off because we only need to score 67 marks after 200. However, if both of these things you find yourself weak into, your English comprehension skills are slightly weak. If you don't find yourself very confident in maths and the reasoning and the quant, well then we will actually have to put separate time and work from it. Then once we are done with this, we have obviously seen the mains paper and the mains paper ka jo slabus hai. But four slide or bachi hai. So then we can actually discuss. Ab, I've spent approximately two hours with you. I will give you only one advice. Learn the GS syllabus by heart. I'll repeat because I've never seen a student who have actually uh, heard that or followed that in the first time I have said. Learn the syllabus of GS paper, charo ke charo GS paper ka, GS paper 1, 2, 3 and 4 by heart. I will tell you this in Hindi, I will tell you this General studies ka mains ka, GS paper 1, 2, 3 or 4 ka, jo slabus hai, wo rata hua, man bad huna chahiye. Mere kehne ka arth hai, dhyan se fis suniye ga, ki ye slabus hai hamara, is slabus ka panna, aap print out karenge, apne saamne rakhenge, phone mein PDF download karenge, aur uske baad rata hua huna chahiye, word to word you shall be able to tell me that the gs paper one sir the first uh, topic is indian culture and you should be able to tell me it consists of the salient features of art forms literature and architecture from ancient times to the modern india modern indian history freedom struggle you have there is no negotiation there is no compromise there is nothing there is no adjustment here there is a very simple clear non-ambiguous statement if you are a upsc aspirant learn the goddamn slavers by heart. I'll give you a heuristic, a rule of thumb. If you have to judge somebody is a good serious aspirant of the UPSC or not, and if that person has been preparing for the UPSC from last six months, like don't test it. Achha nahi lagta test karna. But yeah, if you do want to know, just ask the slavers of the UPSC. If that person is able to recite you the slavers of the GS paper 1, 2, 3, and 4, that person is the right person. That person is preparing seriously. And if he does not tell you the slavers of the GS paper 1, 2, 3, and 4, then well, then again, then then you're not serious. Okay. Now remember, you have to learn all of it. But I overall me batata hu. I'll I'll show you the overview. So this is the GS paper one. Kon kon se syllabus karne hai? Sabse pehle GS paper one mains ke baare mein baat kar rahe hain. First, there is a subject which is called as art and culture. You have to prepare for it. Okay. Approximately, I'm aapko kuch kuch idea deta rehta hu. Forty marks. Uh, year to year depend karta hai. But forty marks ke questions iske andar generally. 30 to 40 marks ka poocha jata hai out of 250. Then after the Indian culture, there is a section of the history, modern history. Uh, modern history is uh, something which begins after year 1700, okay? 
the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb dies in 1707. After that, whatever the history is, is called as the modern history. So that is part of the topic. In prelims, there is a medieval and the ancient history also. In mains, only modern history. Okay, not the medieval, not the ancient. So modern history. Modern history. This is the topic which we have to prepare for, which again generally comes for 20 to 30 marks. Again, it can be 40 also, it can be 50 also. We are just here giving a judgment estimate. Then there are three and four. There are these two topics which have generally been ignored in last two or three years. World history and India after independence. Matlab questions related to 1950 to year 2010. This is what is called as India after independence. So India after independence. Now the questions have not been asked. Since several years, in dono pe questions nahi aa rahe hain. To hum sirf aur sirf yahan pe 10-10 number ke laga ke chalte hain. Ki 10-10 number ka isme se aata hai. Thik hai? And then two most important part of this paper. Uh, one is called as the society. Society. Uh, usually 50, 50 marks you can count. Okay. This plus minus 10, there can be 60 marks questions also, there can be 40 marks also related to the Indian society, the questions related to Indian society, like for example, they can ask you about Kap Panchayat, they can also about the live-in uh, relationships, they can also, they can ask you about the social media, whatever is happening in the Indian society, a lot of them would be current affairs also and a lot of them would be and from the NCRT status also and then the sixth one is the geography, the Indian geography, which is again the largest section of this paper and this geography is generally for um, 60, 70, 80. Again, this is a basic. It, it differs from every two years. There's not a fixed one. Okay. 60. We can put 70 here. Okay. This is it. So these are the six major broad subjects that we have to learn for the GS paper one. Okay. Now we go for the GS paper two. Okay. This is the GS paper two. Again, I'm getting a chance. The moment slide changes, I'm taking that chance again to remind you if you are a serious aspirant, my girl and my boy, please, we have to learn the syllabus. Chipkao is print out lo, kitab ke samne chipkao, PDF lo, wallpaper laga ke rakko char din tak. And learn a syllabus as much as you can. This is the only one advice I'll leave you with today. So this is the paper number two, which broadly speaking, there are questions. The first one is a subject which is called as polity. Polity as in the Indian constitution and the Indian administration. Bharat ka samidhan, Bharat ka rajya vayavastha kis prakar se chalti hai, that is the polity, okay. Then, uh, this is usually 60 to 80 marks, okay, so we'll put it here 60, it can sometimes to be 100 marks also, thus question we aja te hai. Then there is two of the governance, now how do I tell you the governance, you can actually look at the topics which will, which will make you understand what governance means, see, uh, something related to NGOs, self-help groups, welfare programs put in place by the federal government. So governmental schemes, how they are being implemented, are they good, are they functioning, the successes of these uh, issues pertaining to the growth and administration of social sector, hunger and the poverty related issues, transparency and accountability. So all these topics, holistically speaking, combined as a subject, Basically, governance. Okay. Second one. So, this is also again 50, 60 marks. 50, 60 marks. And then government schemes, you can put some separately. Government schemes. Again, 40. And then the fourth one is international relations. Questions related to international relations with the other countries that India having, popularly known as IR. Again, this is section of 60 to 70. Okay. Good to go. Don't add all of them. Koi bhi dhai so nahi banne wala hai, okay? Everything is on general basic theoretical idea. Then the paper number three. And uh, because I'm a sucker for repetition, I'll repeat again. If you have to learn the syllabus of all four GS papers, I am very serious about it. Believe me. This paper number three. Okay, this one, uh, the first one, this is related to economy of India. Okay, not the static economic part. Okay, not the static economy. Me, मतलब वो क्या नाम है जो commerce की books वाला economy नहीं है. Economic development to be more precise. What is happening in the economy of the India? Then the second one is related to science and tech. 
साइंस एंड टेक एंड साइंटिफिक एंड टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडवांसमेंट इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी बायोटेक्नोलॉजी ना ये आता है अप्रॉक्सीमेटली हंड्रेड का ये बीस से तीस का आ जाता है ओके देन देर इज अ क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू एनवायरमेंट एनवायरमेंट अगेन ट्वेंटी थर्टी देन देर इज अ क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी ऑफ द कंट्री इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी अगेन दस बीस का ज्यादा बहुत ज्यादा कॉम्प्लेक्स क्वेश्चन नहीं है दस बीस एंड देन द फिफ्थ इज द डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट ये भी ज्यादा नहीं है टेन मे बी ट्वेंटी समटाइम्स दैट इज इट दीज आर द फाइव प्राइमरी मेजर सब्जेक्ट ऑफ पेपर नंबर थ्री एंड देन the unique paper which is the called as the ethics paper ethics integrity and aptitude which plan to check the ethical values of yours i think upsc have successfully failed in doing that because if this paper was successful we would only get a very very ethic forget about it okay that's okay that's for, okay okay sarcasm baad mein fir kabhi social commentary baad mein karenge so this is the paper of the ethics now this is a unique paper in the sense ki this is divided into two sections okay unlike other three paper this is divided into two section the first section is of 130 marks where the questions are asked about the theory all this topics question is basically asked about all these topics theory what is ethics what is probity what is conscience and all these questions and sometimes they also ask you about your personal life experience like have you ever faced a moral dilemma and if you did face that how did you actually sort it out they ask one question 10 you 10 or 5 marks where they actually ask you to describe your own life experiences pertaining to that situation uh, not very complex easily doable and then then there is a second section in this paper which is called as a case study section okay case study case study section now in this there are six questions 20 mark each where they are going to give you a particular situation in front of you and then they are going to ask you if how would you react in such a situation the case studies okay the case studies so i'll give an example for example they are going to give you a case study as in ki they they describe a situation so you are a district magistrate of a particular place and it has flooded and in the flooded you are actually trying to do the rescue operations but while doing the rescue operations the mla of uh, that particular area is basically pressuring to take the services of his younger brother's company so that he can earn profit uh, what would you and how would you react to it this situation if the uh, if you do not concede to the mla's demand so that person will actually probably trying to shift you or suspend you or maybe transfer you to a different location this mla has good relationship with the chief minister but if you do help him he'll obviously help he'll become a friend to you and he'll help you in your promotional promotions also so they'll just create these kind of a case study they'll ask you you'll obviously have to answer Uh, how generally you would react in such kind of a moral dilemma according to me my theory is that this is the easiest part of the mains this these six case studies are the easiest part of the mains uh, solely because there are not unlimited number of the case studies there is a set 25 to 30 case studies those exist uh, okay have you ever done mathematics aap aapne mathematics to padha hai sabne 10th class tak so you have done the profit and loss questions right profit and loss see whether you know it or not Uh, whether you know the profit and loss uh, chapter or not you do understand that there are a limited number of questions in profit and loss at the end of the day they are going to ask the same question they'll just trying to change the um, statements so profit and loss ke question kaise hote hain he bought that thing for 100 rupees but then sold it for 120 rupees but then later he bought it for 130 so what was his profit percentage before selling it he bought three things for 750 rupees but sold it at a loss of 15% but later bought it at a... so all of these questions so there is a limited number of questions that somebody can ask speed or distance pe koi question hai na ek boat thi ek train thi do train yahan se wahan ja rahi thi ye 20 km ye 30 km you do get the idea ki at the end of the day there are limited number of questions they just change the question language and that is what the case studies also so once you prepare those 20 to 25 case studies you are technically done here right oh and there is a syllabus of optional and you have to remember that also that i forgot thank god i wrote it down because if i would not have wrote it down i think i would not have actually remembered it i forget sometimes 
things. It happens to me a lot. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> there's a slave of options also. This is a long exam. This is a very, very long exam. But the good thing, every year, thousand people are clearing it, which means we can always be one of that. So if it if it, if it can be done, then we can only we can obviously do it. Definitely long, definitely uh, not that easy. But then if it was easy, everybody would do it. But then thousand people are actually doing it. So that means we can actually do it. The ladies and gentlemen, now I'm at your mercy. And let's first of all discuss this topic. So, I had a plan that I thought I would do this and I will just point it out there. But the mirror image actually confused me. Alright, let's talk about the plan B. Shreyesh is saying, what are the characteristics of a good civil servant? Shreyesh, the only characteristics of a... Okay, I won't give it a direct answer. I will give it a slightly indirect answer. Forget about the civil servant. What is the good characteristics of the civil servant? You can read it in an ethics ki books, le, ethic ki book lena, aur usme line se unhone das likhe huye hai. Aur ya fir ethics ke notes padna, usme line se das likhe huye hai. You should ask me, what are the good characteristics of a civil service aspirant? What is the good, uh, good, uh, good characteristics? Aur civil servant aspirant ka, sirf or sirf ek hi good characteristics hai, about the consistency. See, in the long examination, anybody, someday or by some weeks, can read 8-8 eight, eight hours. So, when you are working on it, I am pretty sure about it, you will go through a phase where for one week or for one month, you will be studying a lot and you will be practicing a lot. Which sometimes give delusion to certain people that they are working hard. The good characteristics about the people who clear the exam is that they can do what they do consistently for more than 15 months. So, somebody, a good aspirant, will study for six months, six hours a day, six hours a day. And that person can do that consistently six hours for more than two years. That is what you're going to need to clear this exam. Now, out of all of you, internal motivation So you, I'm pretty sure about it that every single person sitting here right now, when necessary, for two months, you can focus massive and you can be very, very productive. That I'll never doubt. But the question is not about the two months. The question is about the 15 months. So, consistently doing the same repetitive, boring revision thing is the key to clear this exam. The first day, you have given, I have given you the secret. Shall you? Uh, plan B. Uh, I, I, I am so sorry, I forgot the name of the kid. Uh, my parents were child. So, do you have a plan B or not? No, remember. Well, I am uh, uh, plan B. Hona chahiye. Remember this. Jo first attempt hai, the first attempt. First attempt. Absolute pure focus. Ke saath. Koi plan B nahi. First attempt me kuch nahi karna. First attempt me koi distraction nahi. The first 18 months hai na. What I'm telling you is that there has to be one attempt, Juki 100%. You can give a second attempt, third attempt. You can you can give it while doing a job, while doing other exams also, which is fine. That'll be okay. But the first, at least one, okay? Chaimbo first or chaimbo second or chaimbo third, it doesn't matter. But one attempt, 100% absolute, 100% focus, no distraction. Uh, you shall, uh, you should, you should uh, give up your uh, social media uh, in that uh, 18 months. Uh, you shall uh, usually social functions ko bhi, agar skip karna chahate ho, to might actually do that and shall skip any other exam that you might want to give. Uh, if, you, if you want to fill the form of the exam, you shall fill. You can probably just go to a dress rehearsal just to write and have an experience of prelims. That is fine. But yeah, for the 18 months, beyond this, yes, you should have a plan B. Always. Once you have given the, a super serious attempt, 100% if you have given the one attempt, well, then definitely I would 100% advise that then you should choose another lower hanging exam also. Then take a lower hanging exam. Pakadlo. Like, let's say, according to your own uh, interest, you can take a banking, you can take SSC, uh, EPFO, CSIR. Choose one more exam simultaneously and uh, also start uh, a parallel 
simultaneously focus and preparation, uh, dedicating their energy to that. A lower hanging one, which you think you can do it easily. That is that is what my advice is. But for one attempt, yeah, go all out completely, mad about it. And uh, notes, how to make notes, notes. <sighs> Very difficult advices. First of all, remember uh, that the classes are basically going online, which means, which gives you an undue advantage, actually, mein, that uh, I'm not able to keep a track when you're distracted. See, when you're sitting in offline, I can always know when you're distracted. So I'm going to throw my pen or my duster or sometimes my water bottle at your face if you would be looking and talking to that girl. But luckily enough, at this moment, I actually can't see. How do you beat that? How do you beat your own distraction? You shall make notes while classes. Always. Always make notes while class. But don't be very stressed about it. Don't be very stressed about it. Okay. Don't be stressed about it. Class children, yeah. Just keep a notebook in front of you. And just make a note. And you don't have to write each and everything. Try to ensure that you are only putting some jargon words, kuch kuch. The, see, is par, is purpose ka, iska purpose, ye ki aapke notes bane, iska purpose sirf ye hai, ki you shall be engaged while the live classes. You are on, you're taking online classes, the only way to win this, only way to get benefit out of online class is that ki while attending the class, you shall be constantly engaged. And the only way you are going to be constantly engaged is when you're making notes. Or notes aisa nahi ki sab kuch likhe ja rahe ho, likhe ja rahe ho. All you have to do is that ki you're listening, fir dhyan se suno, paanch minut mein do tine one likhe liya. It doesn't matter, you're missing something is fine. Don't have FOMO. FOMO mat karo. Chhod raha hai, chhod raha hai. It's fine. You can leave something. It's not like you have to write each and everything. The whole purpose is that ki after the class, you should have two or three pages of the content which you have written. That's, that is it. Now, the purpose of doing this is basically engagement. That you are constantly engaged with the class, not the note making itself. The second thing, the note making is you have to do is that. I'll give you two rules. Remember that. Both of them. We have all the books, reference books, all the reference books and all the NCRTs which we'll be studying, we'll actually try to convert them in our own notes. The more we are able to do it in our notes, own, own notes, the more benefit it is going to be. So let's say you're reading the 12th class NCRT for the history. Okay. My first advice, never start making notes until and unless you have read that book twice. So don't make notes when you're reading it for the first time. So um, you pick a uh, NCRT of the history, you read it just. Just like read it, read it like a book, like do it fast and read it as soon as possible. Um, then after 15 days or a month, you pick again, you just pick a pen or pencil or a marker and then you read it slowly and then you mark it as much points you want to mark there onwards. Then after one month or 15 days, now you're ready to study it as well as, as you can. Then you make notes. Never make notes before reading any book twice. If you will make notes in the first reading, Everything will feel important and you will end up writing each and everything on a A4 size sheet. No point. The second one and very necessary. I hope you stay stick with that. Only 5% of content you read. What is the correct meaning of it? If you read a 20 page, 20 pages of a book, if you read 20 pages of a book, those 20 pages have to be condensed in one page of the notes. If you're not able to do it, we are doing it wrong. If we read a page of 2000 pages, then the article of 2000 pages will be 100 words. Ke, oh, sorry, 2000 pages, my bad. If we read a article of 2000 pages, then it should be condensed in 100 words. If it's more than that, we are wrong. So if we read an NCRT chapter, so if we read an NCRT chapter, which was basically of 20 pages. So max to max, one or two pages. 
के अंदर वो नोट्स बनने चाहिए इफ यू आर एबल टू डू दैट गुड सो वी हैव एन एनसीआर ऑफ हिस्ट्री विच हेज थ्री हंड्रेड पेजेस सो इसके नोट्स ना चालीस से पचास पेजेस में होने चाहिए इफ मोर मतलब हमने कुछ गलत किया है मीन्स वी आर जस्ट राइटिंग एडिशनल इंफॉर्मेशन ऑफ द फॉर्मो होता है सो दिस इज एन इंटरनल थिंग यू हैव टू स्टॉप एट यूर ओन राइट so you have to you have to hold yourself uh, trying to write things which are already written here it's no point just putting uh, just writing the same things which are already written in the book in the notes the whole purpose shall be actually just to provide yourself a structure when you read it you'll be able to recollect whole of the book and you can so that you can try to revise the whole book within one hour through those notes this is the external limitation that you'll have to put this is this comes with the practice so it's not it doesn't matter it don't worry about it it's not like you're going to start it tomorrow but yeah it comes with the practice you should always remember never make notes of something which you're reading for the first time or the second time always third time and whenever making notes always have this basic limitation on your mind obviously kabhi kabhi zyada ho jayega kabhi kabhi 20 pages ke notes do ya teen mein banenge but when you would have to have a artificial hold over your writing you shall be able to get it right Uh, Akansha, short notes. You should make shorts. Short notes, right? All the ladies and gentlemen. So, um, as far as I know, I think I'm going to be here tomorrow also. But tomorrow we are going to actually uh, not have a large session. We are taking it lightly. Uh, we'll only discuss what we are going to do is that we'll discuss the syllabus of the paper one. Why? Good question. I like it. I like the question of yours. This one. Uh, we are going to discuss the syllabus of this paper the first reason because i don't trust you <laughs> i know i have told you to learn the syllabus uh, but i don't think so you will no no, no, no. i know you no no bol to tum mujhe pata hai tum nahi karoge i'll come myself and discuss the syllabus of this paper okay also also i'll also discuss the previous year's question which i wanted you to do it but uh, I, i know you will not do it <laughs> i know <laughs> i know मन नहीं करता यार मन बिल्कुल भी नहीं करता जीवन में किसी कुछ भी सो विल डू द पी वाई क्यूज ओके सो टुमारो वट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज दैट वील डिस्कस द सिलेबस ऑफ दिस द होल सिलेबस ऑफ दिस एंड वी विल डिस्कस द प्रीवियस इयर्स क्वेश्चंस ऑफ दिस टेन इयर्स मीन्स ग्रेट but you have to do it on your own obviously but i'll just give you a basic idea how to start with us how to start doing it i think that shall put put us on a right path yeah this was an absolutely lovely session with you guys have fun chill relax rehna hai पूरे के पूरे प्रिपरेशन के टाइम पे फन रहना है जस्ट ट्राई टू डेवलप अ कंसिस्टेंट डिसिप्लिन ठीक है ट्राई टू डिसिप्लिन अपने दिमाग अपने दिन के छः घंटे यू स्टार्टिंग राइट नाउ सो यू डोंट नीड मच ओके डोंट वरी अबाउट इट विल विल रीच द स्टेजेस ऑफ द ट्वेल्व एंड द फोर्टीन आर्स ऑल्सो बट इन द बिगनिंग इन द फर्स्ट मंथ ऑफ द जनवरी वेर यू आर जस्ट बिगनिंग लेट्स गेट लेट्स ऑफ सिक्स आर्स कैन वी डू दैट टू एंड हाफ टू थ्री आर्स ऑफ द क्लास एंड देन थ्री टू फोर आर्स ऑफ आवर ओन पर्सनल स्टडीज आई थिंक वी कैन डू दैट Uh, if you are successfully able to build that habit we would be on the right path we would definitely be on the right path i'll see you tomorrow mm, 6 pm study iq is ab taiyari hui affordable